Hello, you most welcome to Revealed and today, well, we get to speak to one of the major hopefuls for the national team. We're talking about a 20-year-old player who's just been invited for his first cap with the Black Stars. Now he has a cultured left foot and he came to the national, you know, scene when we heard about a young footballer who's just gradually just, you know, climbing the ladder at FC Porto in the Portuguese league. And uh, Quisi appeared certainly uh, saw some prospect in him when he invited him into his first, you know, national team uh, squad for the upcoming World Cup qualifiers. He goes by the name Christian Achu. You want to find out a little bit more about him? He will tell us where he grew up, the clubs he played for in Ghana, what really made him enter, you know, the football, you know, career realms, and what he expects to achieve in the years that will be, you know, coming ahead of him. We need to go for a commercial break. When we come back, my guest on reveal today is Christian Achu. Bobby Valentino. Valentino. Most welcome back to Reveal the Game. My guest is Christian Achu. Now, Reveal is a certain the platform where we talk about our sports heroes, and today we talk about some of the young potentials who could make it to the national team and is already making headlines in the Portuguese league. Thank you very much, Christian Achu, for joining us on this program. Thank you. And how are you doing? I'm okay. Mm. What is with the hairstyle here? <laughs> It's my new style. It's a new style. Yeah. What is it called? Uh, uh, the, in Ghana, they call it Pemi or something like that. Pemi or Pemi. Let's talk about you. Um, people want to know who Christian Achu is. Where did you grow up? Uh, I grew up in Medina uh, with uh, my parents and brothers. Um, I have six brothers and four sisters my family uh, settling life wasn't easy in Medina but by God's grace maybe true hmm. yeah. six brothers yeah six brothers and how many sisters four and uh, you know where on the ladder are you are you the least the last one yes I'm the least Ketri. I'm a twin yeah you're a twin yeah. okay well you told you told us about life not being easy tell us about how, how you know you started up um, with 10 siblings. Ah, uh, yeah. Exactly. Tell us a little bit more about your family. Okay. Um, there are some in, in Coco, I have some in Adan, and I'm staying here with my brother and my twin sister. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So did you have everything, you know, in place for you when you were growing up? Was it difficult, schooling and all that? Yeah, of course, I had difficulties in life. Um, at times going to school with money was even difficult, you know. But um, I give thanks to my parents for um, encouraging me in everything that I was doing. I even sold some things in the market, Medina market. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was, I was saying it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. Yeah. But did that upbringing help you, you know, mature as a, as a human being, as a person? Yes, yes, really. It helped me mature as a um, person to know more about life. And it's very good if you really suffered and then you are trying to make it, you know. It, uh, it comes with, uh, by the grace of God, you know. And it also it helps you to uh, realize that you can't, do it without someone mm -hmm. you know? so i would say yes it helped me to be a mature person exactly so at what stage did you realize that you had a very good talent in football that could be you know developed okay uh, when i was young like 10 7 years i was playing street football you know um, for me i knew that i had a talent but uh, I would say, to be honest, I never thought I would reach this level, but I was hoping that by God's grace, uh, things will, will be okay, you know. Um, I was playing for PCFC in Atachimota, you know. Atachimota. Yeah, mm -hmm. and Fairnot saw me in regionals and they said, oh, we want this guy. From there, then I realized that, okay, my talent is something else then I have to work hard because if Fair Nord Academy wants me that means it's not easy you know, to play Fair Nord. Hmm. So what, was it easy you know for your parents to allow you to go join Fair Nord, which you know specializes in P 
purely football issues? Okay, my mom uh, wanted me to go to school. Mm -hmm. Continue school. Yes, but I love football so much, so I wanted to combine uh, school with uh, football. Mm -hmm. And Fairnot has that that thing, you know, to go to school and then to uh, play football. Also, but uh, most importantly, was my talent because. And I, I knew that by God's grace, I can achieve something from it when I was in Fennel. So too hard work in them. Mm. Okay. Let's talk about the role your parents played. You just talked about your mom who wanted you to combine education and, and no football at the same time. What about your dad? How, what sort of help did you, did you get from them? Okay, uh, my dad wanted me to play football. Uh, he wasn't... Uh, uh, much caring about the school or something. He was just uh, pushing me to play football and then encouraging me that you have talent, you can do it, you know, all kind of things. At times, my coaches would come to my house and speak with my mom to um, help me, you know, to play football because uh, my coaches were thinking that I have a good talent. Mm. But my mom was quite difficult. <laughs> So, um, but for my dad, he was really encouraging me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about, you know, final. Um, you, so you went, you went to final. Yeah. How was the environment like for you? Were you expecting, were your expectations met when you got there? Yes, I would say yes, because I heard that final was a big club, you know, with uh, good facilities that can help young players to develop their talent. So when I went there, yes, I was, what I was expecting, I had it there, like um, food, mm -hmm. accommodation, and then uh, good coaches to direct you in football. So, uh, Fernand, I was really happy at Fernand. Mm. Who are some of your teammates at Fernand? Fernand, I played with uh, Enes, Enes Asante. Uh, but Soja was my senior. Dominic Adia, you mean? Dominic Adia was my senior uh, player. and. Uh, how do we call him? Makati. Makati was my senior too. Mm, okay. And um, Harry Sinafo. Harry yeah. Sinafo. <laughs> that, that's the name you were trying to get. To. <laughs> exactly. Who, who were your close friends uh, at, 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 the, at that time? Close friends. I have uh, a guy playing, he's still playing Fenno, Joseph Amwa, and then Daniel Sabote. <laughs> but they are still at the camp. Mm -hmm. They were okay. my close friends. How did they help you, you know, to develop that talent? Uh, for my friends, um, you know, we sometimes in the night we go out to sit and then we speak about our lives. Um, you know, we came from a difficult uh, situation and we moved to Fernand. That wasn't easy. So we were trying to say, ah, oh, we have talent, you know because it is not easy to make it inferno. So then we have to continue working hard. So from this, um, my friends were encouraging, we were encouraging each other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now tell us about your, the big moment at final. Were there some particular incident or were there some particular matches that easily come to mind even when you look back today? Yes, uh, I was playing the under 14 in Fairno mm -hmm. when uh, our senior side was playing against uh, the national under 20 team. So they called me to be on the bench with them. So I was there. And then we were playing, and they scored us 1 0. Mm -hmm. In the second half, their coach had changed some when I was in. When I came in, I equalized the goal. It was a fantastic moment for me. <laughs> <laughs> where, where did this happen? At final? Yeah, at final. Yeah. It happened there. Yeah. And you were playing against the Black Stars, you mean? No, the Black Stars, the under 20 team. The under 20 team yeah. at that time. Yeah. Now, for those who don't know you, what sort of player are you? Um, a midfielder, a defender? Okay. Which, which, you know, which of, the, of the two feet really works for you? Uh, I'm a left footed player. Mm -hmm. I play in the midfield. Um, I'm a fast guy and I have good technique, good control on the ball and also good passing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, can you tell us more stories about final? I'm just so much interested in that one. So, in this particular one, you scored a goal after yeah. you had been introduced. What, what, what more stories do you have? Okay, we went to play against ASEC too. 
then the, we we played one one. I also uh, scored a penalty. It was a good moment, and to speak about fair not, uh, I would say they really polished my talent. Mm -hmm. it, it was there that I learned um, to give a good pass, when to give pass, when to tackle, when to dribble, and when to pass. Mm -hmm. So uh, from fair not, I would say they really helped me. Exactly. Anything. One man who's been associated with final, particularly is this, uh, Coach Samade. Um, so many players have gone through his hands. What experience did you have with him? Okay, um, he's a man of, uh, he's an aggressive person, you know, on the pitch. And he likes players who are aggressive, skillful, and really want to work hard. And he has been speaking with us every time. You always have to work hard if you want to play. Mm -hmm. So we also go to beach on Sundays. He always speak with us and then watch our games every day. And then correct us if we make any mistake after the game. So it was really a great moment, I would say. Exactly. On that great note, we need to go for a commercial break. When we come back, we talk a little bit more about what happened after final and moving to FC Porto, where he currently is. We'll be right back after this break. Most welcome back again. My guest on Reveal this Christian at you. I'm enjoying the story and I hope you certainly are too. So, post final, what happened? Why did he leave final? Uh, I left Fenot because there was a situation where my mom wanted me to really go to school, you know. And I had that problem with uh, Fenot because they spoke with Fenot that they want me to really go to school. And Fenot uh, also were thinking that no, the guy has a talent and he can make it to Fenot. Mm. But then I had some situation, then I, I have to go back home, you know. Mm. Then Chita bought me where I can go to school. You're talking about Cheetah, it's another football club. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Cheetah, At Cheetah. final, I mean, do you have the facilities up to, let's say, um, classes? No, GSS3. It's GSS3. Yeah. Right on to GSS3. So it means you completed GSS3. Yeah, final. and I was... And you wanted to go to secondary school? I was in secondary school. The first level, yeah. Oh, oh, exactly. But your parents wanted you home? Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's, that's, that's a little bit strange. <laughs> but anyway, so you moved back home. And Cheetah FC also um, saw your talent and they bought you. Yeah. How was the experience, the different experiences like? You having to go to final to develop talent and now a football club for that matter wanted you. Okay, yeah. Um, you know, as Cheetah, uh, you know, the facilities were quite difficult, you know, with boss and with uh, better coaches, you know, and with sometimes food. But uh, you know, this is something that I have to go through. So I take it as a life. This is what I have to go through, and I have to work out towards it because I'm in Cheetah now. I'm not in Fenno. I don't have to look back. I have to move forward. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So moving forward, what was a, you know, that big point for you where you had a chance to move abroad? Can you tell, take us through it? Yeah, I was playing. Uh, I was playing at Kaswa uh, with Cheetah, you know? mm -hmm. and. Uh, Cheetah has an agent from Portugal. I think he's Canadian, but he basically based in Portugal. So he saw me and he said, oh, I want this guy and I want him to go uh, to Porto. Mm -hmm. So from there, then I went to Porto, junior side. And then I trained with them three days and then uh, they gave me uh, wait, six months. They gave me six months contract. Mm -hmm. That, I mean, how did you feel that time when the announcement was, uh, you know, made? <laughs> I was very happy, you know, to play FC Porto, uh, one of the best clubs in Portugal. And it's not easy. But uh, this is what has happened, you know. So I was really excited about it. How, you know, when did this happen? About two years or three years ago? Yeah, two and a half years ago. Two and a half years ago. And so basically you've been at Porto all those while after that. Yeah. And uh, how difficult is it, you know, to adjust to the system? Because first, the language, <laughs> the weather and all yeah. that. How did you adjust? Uh, uh, for the weather, it wasn't easy for me. I was really cold. <laughs> <laughs> and for the language, um, 
when I went there, they started speaking Portuguese with me. Mm. They said, you have to learn Portuguese. So when I said, okay, yeah, I'm in Portugal, then I have to learn Portuguese. But they have some people who speak English and also Portuguese. So mm -hmm. sometimes they translate to me uh, if I can't understand it. Mm -hmm. So you can speak the language now? Yes, I understand. Can you just give us a brief one sentence? <laughs> <laughs> it's really interesting to hear you speak. Ah, uh, okay. Um, Perhaps I have to ask a question. Eu sou Christian. Uh -huh. Eu sou Christian. What's that? I'm Christian. <laughs> <laughs> You're Christian. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so, obviously, you were then at Porto. You wanted to get to the top, you know, ranks. And the opportunity came when you trained with the first team. That is when we all got to know about a certain Christian at you in uh, Portugal. How did that happen for you? Uh, I was playing the, I played in the junior team. Uh, of FC Porto two years. My first season wasn't easy. I had some injuries, so we couldn't win the Portuguese league for the junior side. Then my next season, uh, we won the league, mm. and I was the uh, most uh, variable player. So they called me for their last game in the senior side, their last game against my team. Mm -hmm. And I went and sat on the bench, but I was just <laughs> I didn't itching to go. <laughs> but it just yeah, didn't come. Yes, yes. Sometimes, I mean, they keep on saying you have to be patient and wait for your time. But, you know, at other times, for young players like you, with the blood, everything, just right there, hoping to go, how, how are you able to handle yourself? Uh, okay, because uh, I wanted to play football. I love football. I really do love football. So, every time uh, I try to encourage myself when I'm down, mm -hmm. even because I love the game, I try to play, I try to work hard. And I tried to take advice from um, my senior players over there, and the coaches also, they loved me, so I tried to take advice from them. It wasn't easy, but by God's grace. Who are your mentors? Talk about footballers in, in, in the world. Um, I love Messi. 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 Yeah, I love his style of play. Why? What, what is so special about his style? Uh, he can dribble two, three, four, five players, which is very good. If you have, as a footballer, if you have this kind of talent, then you are really special. You know? And he's also a sad football. He's a very humble guy. Mm -hmm. The humility aspect. Yes. And then at Porto, you also compare to Hawk. I mean, I see the two of you, and these are two contrasting players all together. One a striker, one a midfielder. <laughs> Why that comparison? Ah, OK, uh, there was. A game that we played in uh, Germany, we played a friendly game against the second division side. Mm. And Hook was playing on the right side. I was Hook. playing, yes. Hook. Okay, Hook. He was playing on the right side, and I was playing on the left side. And that game we won 11 0. It was really a great game for Hook and I. So, um, this it was pre season or yeah, something? Yeah, it was pre season. Mm. And from that day, they started to. Uh, Call me mini hook, uh, this, you are the next hook, yeah. And also, I won the FIFA Blue Stars with, with FC Porto, and I won the Portuguese League also. So from there, they said, oh, this, this guy is going to be the next hook, but I'm not listening to what they're saying. I'm <laughs> just concentrating on mm. my game. So. And after that, you get a call up to the national team. How did that come to you? Were you expecting it? You know, my dream when I was in. Uh, Fair enough was to play the national team. Mm -hmm. It is something that I really want to do, and I want to do it and play for my nation. I love when players play for their nation, and I'm watching them. So I said, uh, I want to play the national team also. So when I went to Portugal, this was what is what was in my mind to play the national team, to play for my country, to defend my nation every time. Mm -hmm. So I said, no, then I have to play for the national team. So when I I was called for the national team. I was really excited. Really excited. Yes. And uh, you, you got into the team. I mean, you, you. So it means basically you've been following the exploit of the team. Yeah. yeah. And how how did you think when you know we were knocked out by Uruguay at the World Cup? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I will congratulate the players who went to the World Cup that year. You know, they played. They really did well, and they made me proud. And people were looking at Ghanaian players as 
they have good quality, you know, good qualities. So I was happy even we were out, but with their performance, I was very happy. I was proud, really proud to be a Ghanaian, and I wanted to play for the national team. How did the Portuguese react to that? Uh, they said, oh, they said, you lost, you lost your game, but your country, they are really good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your, fav your favorite Black Stars players? <laughs> okay, uh, I like Abedi Pele. The yeah. maestro? Yeah, the maestro. Also a left-footed player. Exactly. And all that. What do you hope to achieve now that you are in the team? Obviously, trying to get into the um, first 11. What do you hope to achieve less in the next 5-10 years? 5-10 years, I would like to be... Um, I would like to be a useful player for the Black Stars and also to win Champions League with my club and also to play in um, Spanish League or um, England League, you know. This is what I really want to achieve. Mm, exactly. And so, I mean, you're a young man trying to get it up there, 20 years of age. Um, people usually look at footballers and they say, you, put, you, have, a, you have lots of money. Is that, is that, you know, the real thing on the ground? Okay, um, football now, yes, I would say um, there's a lot of money in football, but the money is not for, for the lazy people. Mm. The money is for people who want to work hard. Yes, so if uh, you are a lazy footballer, you cannot get money. Yeah, you have to working. work hard. Yeah. Work hard and then, by God's grace, um, I always say by God's grace because there are some people, they are really good in football, but without the grace of God, they can't get to where they are going. So by God's grace, if you work hard and you keep following God with what you are doing, then I believe you will get to the top. Now, we came to the car park when the Blasters had their training session. Classy, you know, the finest cars available in the world. We're all just littered all around. Are you the type who also likes, you know, such things, houses and all that? Yeah, as a footballer, uh, if you have money, you have to buy a house, you have to get a car. This is the life. You can't stay at where you were staying, you know, you have to move forward. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's something that not uh, only footballers, but others also do, you know, to be good in life. But also uh, the biggest aspect in it is to be humble, to be very humble. Are you married? No, I'm not married. I'm too young to marry. <laughs> I'm too young to marry. Oh, wow. You're just tw you're 20 years. Yes, I'm 20 years. Yes. And you have everything. No, I don't have everything. I don't have everything. I'm now coming up. You know. You have a girlfriend. Yes, I have a girlfriend. What's her name? Uh, Claire Rupio. She's in uh, Germany. She's in Germany. Uh, a German. A German. Yeah, a German. Wow. So you went the foreign way. <laughs> <laughs> What would you say out there to girls, you know, who, who are fond of you, who want to experience you, let's say, watch you on the field of play? What, what message do you have for them? Uh, what I would say is uh, they should be praying for me. You know, they are my fans and they have to pray for me for everything to work on well. And also, I would say I give thanks to them, uh, for all my fans outside, for um, supporting me in everything that I was doing. So. When I asked you to say a few words in Portuguese, you went the Christian way, I'm a Christian. How big a role is Christianity or your religion in the things you do? Uh, for me, uh, in my life, I'll say the greatest thing that I want, I really want to to do, you know, is go to play football, but I, I am really uh, a religious person and I without God God is my life God is my life God is my everything with the, with, with the level that I am now I will give big thanks to God you know so uh, I always try to do uh, what God says even though the Bible says uh, and we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love him and to those who are called according to his purpose so if you follow God, then I believe everything will be okay. Exactly. God is everything. And I look forward to the day you score 
your first goal for the Black Stars. Okay, Christina thank you. chooses the name. On behalf of the crew, uh, most definitely the hard working Francis and crew, Mighty Micah Jr., Nana Quikwedia, and the rest of the people who made the show a success. We say bye for now. Do watch out for Christina. Chief.